Hey, Mark Lambert here with Sweet Swan of Mine Distributing. We're here in the test kitchen, inside kitchen today, prepping for a contest this weekend in Franklin, Tennessee. And we're starting our meat prep. We like to do our meat prep on Wednesday. I didn't get it out of the freezer in time, so we're doing it on Thursday. Um, first thing I like to do is my ribs and get those out of the way. Um, we cook uh, Compart Family Farms, uh, competition spare ribs. Most of the breastplate's been tri trimmed off or the cartilage's been trimmed off, uh, but there is still some of it on there. Um, and we like to trim up a little of the diaphragm that's on the back. Just to uh, make sure there's any, you know, if there's any big chunks of fat, we get that off. Uh, just requires a little trimming ahead of time. You always want to do your competition trimming at home uh, where you've got, you know, proper hygiene, where you can clean really well. Um, where you're comfortable, where it's not too hot, like right now when it's 100 outside. So we're going to make sure that we get these cleaned up and ready. So when we get to the contest, all we have to do is take them out of the bag, season them, put them on the cooker. That's it. We don't want to have to worry about a bunch of knives. And most of the time, except for building competition boxes, I don't even take a knife out until, until it's time to start slicing and cutting and building competition boxes. So we're going to show you how easy this is to take a full Compart competition spare rib and knock it down to that perfect cut that fits in the box nice and pretty where you're going to get nice um, Appearance scores and also good taste scores because sometimes there's a little chunk of fat or two that has to come off check it out Okay, so first thing you really want to do is you want to take some paper towels and just dry it off You don't want to chase it around the cutting board um, It'll be real slippery. So just get some paper towels and dry it off. So it's easy to deal with um, Really you don't need to do a whole lot until you go ahead and trim this down. You don't want to trim parts that you're going to trim off all at once anyway. So the undesirables that I don't want. So what I'm looking for is I go from about the fifth bone in, which would be one, two, three, four, five, is usually about the longest bone. And that's usually about where the bones sometimes start to curve as well. Um, so I'm going to use that as an indicator and follow your finger from the cut end of the bone down to the edge to where the bone and the cartilage meet. And you can see that on this one because you actually got a little red line. You can see kind of a little meat line right along that edge as well. So that's where we're going to separate it. We're going to cut it down to where the bones are just about as long as my finger right there. Maybe just a touch longer. So I'm going to go and use a measurement right here at that bone. And I want to kind of make me a good imaginary line all the way down to the other end to make a nice uniform slab. And then I'm just going to take this is a bubble blade that's serrated so uh, it makes it real easy to cut through. You can do just about anything. You're not cutting bone, you're cutting cartilage so this is just nice and sturdy. you got a good handle for this particular application. So I'm cutting through cartilage, cut meat and everything with one fail swoop. I want to make sure I don't leave anything there. And that y'all is a rib tip. Those are great, uh, great snacking. So what's left, y'all, is uh, my competition slab, just like that. They're nice and neat. I'm going to come here, and I'm going to take this little bit of diaphragm <clears throat> is left on there. Not much, but I don't want that on there. They're not going to sit pretty in the box. Um, probably not going to use maybe down to that last bone anyway, but I like to take them off just in case I need to use one that's back in this diaphragm section. So I'm going to pull that off. I like to cook a 10 bone slab typically. I'm not going to count this little partial bone here. This is a half bone. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so I'm going to cut just inside that 10th one there because I've got a buffer bone on that end. Um, 9, or 10, 9 or 10 bones is usually all <clears throat> you really need. Competition barbecue, cook what you need. Don't cook anything more than you're going to turn in. This is not a yield contest to see who can get the most out of the slab of ribs. <clears throat> this is see who can get the highest score out of the slab of ribs. So don't worry about yield. Next thing, take your paper towel um, and you can go in here on this bone and just kind of pull back that membrane. You can see I just used my finger to pull that back a little bit and it's a little slippery. So take you a piece of paper towel and reach in there and grab a hold of it. And we're just going to slowly peel this membrane back. Now this is a little easier. You may have seen it done a little easier, especially on a slab of baby back ribs. 
the back rib membrane is much thicker and tougher and easier to come off of. Maybe it, maybe it just doesn't stick to the back rib as bad, but um, you need something to peel it off to help hold on to it. And you can see that membrane followed, um, almost followed our line of the diaphragm and our bone is right back here with our cartilage. So there is that little bit of membrane that we have. And then I'm going to go on to the other side, to the, the cut side. I'm going to make sure that I don't have anything sticking out. Make sure that it's nice and trim. I've got a few little pieces and I'm just pressing down to make sure that any excess meat on this cut edge sticks out so that I can trim it off. And that's just a few little pieces of fat. What that does is it just gives me a nice uniform edge from which the meat to pull back from the bone. Which This is where you're going to see that pullback. Look at that marbling in between the bones on these compart ribs. Man, it's awesome. There's very little fat back here, but I'll show you really close what we can do to come in here. If you want, you can come and take some of this extra fat out just like that. And don't get crazy. You don't want to dig into those bones on the back, but if you've got a lot of fat, and this one doesn't, but if you do happen to have a lot of fat, you can come in here and just sort of hold it up and trim off a little bit of it. But this doesn't have a lot. It doesn't need much trimming whatsoever. It may take a little more of this um, right there, a little bit more of that diaphragm off. And then at that point, we've got our competition slab ready. Um, on this side, there is a little extra fat, as you can see right here. Um, I'm not going to get too aggressive. I'm going to trim some of it off, but not too much. I'm going to let this flat make it easier, y'all. So I'm just going to come here and trim some of this fat, excess fat off. Make sure your knife is really sharp so that you can make good, even, smooth cuts. Nothing's jagged on here. Your appearance scores start right now. That's where you're working on is your appearance scores. And by taking some of this extra fat, you're working on some of your tenderness and your taste scores as well. You don't want a big chunk of fat in the judge's mouth. So as you see, I'm just slowly shaving it just a little bit. And I'm not going to take it all off. But where I have this big fat, in order to make sure that it renders really well, I'm going to get the tip of my knife and just come in here and score this fat a little bit. That's a little pro tip, y'all. Score it one direction, go back and score it the other direction. Don't get deep. Just use the tip of your knife to score that and break that up. You can hardly tell that's done, but it'll help that render a little bit better. And that fat layer is still under there for all that flavor. Now, I've got a little shiner bone sticking through right there. I'm not worried about it because it is on the short end that I'm not going to use. So, the bones that I will probably use out of the slab will be right here, y'all. We'll be right in this section. That's the thickest bones, the longest bones. And you can see that is the most the bones with the most uh, meat on the top. And I've catched the last edge of one with a little bit of fat. No big deal. That fat's flavor. So, we've got competition, spare ribs, compart Duroc pork ready to go in the bag so somebody says oh you can't do that i thought you couldn't do that ahead of time no here's the rule you can take anything away from the meat you want to down to a certain weight on the pork butt you're supposed to cook a certain weight pork butt and brisket um, but that's it i think it's it's four or five pounds but i can take anything away from the slab of ribs i want i just can't add anything to it until after meat inspection so to make this nice and easy, you're gonna I just take these and roll these up. And you know, to be honest with you, they'll probably fit in this two and a half gallon ziplock without having to do that. Sometimes I like to do it to, to work so I don't have to worry about that bone poking through my bag. And I don't want any blood or anything anywhere. So I think I will with that little bone on the end. I'm just gonna go through here and roll all of my ribs in case I've got a piece of a bone that's sharp on the end. And this is a two and a half gallon hefty ziplock. Uh, all of my competition meats go in these before I put them in the cooler. Um, I've got three slabs of competition ribs, three pork butts, one brisket, and I'm going to cook 12 pieces of chicken. So all of that, each one of them will go into one of these Ziplocs and go into the cooler nice and clean and ready. When you show up to the contest, everything you have is ready. All you have to do is inject it and season after you're done. So hope this helps you in your competition travels. Um, Y'all have a great year. Good luck on the competition circuit. God bless you. Hey, follow us at Barbecue Champs Academy to learn how to cook these ribs as well.